Hello everyone, welcome back to another project video. It makes me very happy that you're back, ready to create. On this week's project, we're going to learn about one of the most amazing artists that ever existed. Without a doubt, Vincent van Gogh is one of the most famous artists of the world. He was born in the Netherlands, but spent most of his life in France. He had a very difficult life. Nonetheless, he still was a very dedicated and talented artist. He painted over 2,000 paintings, most of those during the last two years of his life. His paintings are easily recognizable because of his unique style, bright colors, bold brush strokes, and much movement. We're going to be recreating one of his paintings using only crayons. Crayons are great for blending and layering colors, for adding texture, which are key elements on every Van Gogh painting. So bring a piece of paper and your crayons and let's make! We are recreating a painting that already exists, so we need to look at the colors of the painting and find those colors on our color collection. To make our first fold, we have to mark some lines on the top of the paper. Use your hand to measure four fingers right at the top of the paper. Doesn't matter if you do it on the left or the right, just make sure your fingers are right at top and then make a line right below your four fingers. Take the bottom corners of the paper and lift up, meeting the mark that you made first. Hold your paper down so it matches both the left and the right side to make sure that your fold is straight. Don't forget to crease down the fold. At the bottom middle of the paper, we're going to measure three fingers going up. Place your fingers down, make sure they start at the end of the paper and then count three fingers up make a mark right above your fingers. We're going to draw a square here. To get the size right, I'm going to place my middle finger right on top of the point and then close my fingers right next to it. I'm going to make a mark on the left side of my pinky and on the right side of my index finger. Make these two lines grow tall as much as the height of the first dot that you did. Close it up with the horizontal line that connects both lines and you got yourself a rectangle. Get your scissors and cut both the left and the right line carefully. Make sure to stop right at the top of the square shape for both sides. Open up your paper. Pull out the cutted part of the paper and make an opposite fold from what it had. Pull the little piece towards you, folding it carefully, sandwiching it in between the paper. Make the crease on the top side of the rectangle. Open up one more time. Bring a second piece of white paper and perfectly align it with your first one. Make a pencil mark where the first one's fold is. We need to fold the second piece of paper in the exact same way. Open up and place it behind your first paper. Make sure it matches. Use a pencil to carefully trace the cutout part of the first paper. Make sure to draw both the top and the bottom part of the cutouts. Move the top paper away and draw a horizontal line on both the top and the bottom to make another rectangle shape. Bring a little piece of paper that fits in between the slots that we cut it. This is meant to protect the sides of the paper so that the background doesn't have any extra tracing lines. Bring a black crayon and start tracing the top square. Make sure you trace the sides, the bottom and the top. To draw the back of the chair, measure three fingers on one corner of the chair Make a dot and then connect with the straight line going up and then coming back down in a very skinny oval shape. Repeat for both sides of the square, left and right. For the front legs, make a super skinny rectangle that goes on a corner of the bottom of the square, following the line that the fold and the cutout give you. Remember to use your protective piece of paper so you don't have any extra marks on the background of your project. On this same area, add a couple of horizontal lines 
four to foot rest of the chair. On the side of the chair, draw a letter X that goes from corner to corner and then the opposite way. Before adding the lines that you see me adding here, we need to color the chair yellow first. You can make these steps when we're done coloring the chair all yellow. For the back of the chair, we're going to add an arch line in between both rectangles we drew, from the left to the right. Then a straight line right below our arch line. Then add a couple of horizontal lines that are similar to the ones that we did on the legs of the chair. For the floor, we're just going to trace the line that we already have because we folded the paper. On the right side of the chair, do a line that goes from the line of the floor all the way up to the top of the paper. Add an unfinished square shape on the bottom and top of the door and then a small rectangle unfinished shape on the middle. On the left side of the chair, we're going to draw a nightstand. Draw a rectangle on the left side. Add a set of legs. Then add the legs that are behind. Then Draw a very skinny and long horizontal rectangle for the top of the drawer. The drawer is a rectangle inside of rectangle with the circle in the center. On top of the knife stand, draw a jar of water and a cup of water next to it. Van Gogh was a painter and he had paintings hanging all over his bedroom. Add one on the top part of your paper. For the floor, Let's draw horizontal lines that go from the left of the paper all the way to the end right of the paper. Do a couple of these. These are going to mimic hardwood floors. For the hardwood floor divisions, we're going to do small little horizontal lines that are going to pile up vertically every couple of inches. Stagger them across the floor and make a couple of inches of separation from between them. Bring your sepkin paper. The bottom part of the rectangle that we made is going to show off the floor that we just did. So draw a couple of horizontal lines just the way you did it for the floor. The top part of the rectangle, it's the back legs of the chair. So you're going to draw the legs just the same way we did them on the front, but you're going now to draw them on that space. Now it's time to color. To replicate a Bengal style coloring, we have to make sure that we put colors on top of colors. That means that there's nothing that we're going to color that will only be a single color. We need to layer different kinds of colors on the same place. For example, for my wood type table, I started with the brown color and then I layer orange color on top of it. This will create texture and dimension. The water bases have two colors, a light blue and a dark blue. The floor, we're going to start coloring a little bit in scribble scrabble, except our lines are only going to follow one direction, left to right, right to left. They all have to be horizontal. I started with an orange color and I didn't fill in all the way. I left a lot of white spots here and there. Then I come in with my brown color and I started filling in some of those empty spots. Finally, I brought in the yellow and I completely filled in any other empty spots that I had. Make sure to also color the other chunk of floor on your other paper. We're going to use a similar technique for the wall of the bedroom. Start coloring again in a very scribble scrabble loose way, but your lines are going to follow the vertical direction this time. All they're going to do is go up and down, up and down, leaving some white space here and there. Then bring a darker blue and go the other direction. This is called a cross hatch technique. It's when we cross the lines that go from one direction and then we switch the direction all in the same place. This will add lots of texture to our painting. I used the same technique for the door, except I switched the colors. I added yellow, brown, red, and even black, all on top of each other. This is going to make, again, more dimension to make it look like a Van Gogh painting. 
Now we have to glue the paper of the project on top of the back paper where we have the little chunk of floor and the back side of the legs. I started by gluing the floor part of the project first, then folded my project paper back up so that I can add more glue to the back of the paper and then glue the wall part of my project. Press down to make sure the glue sticks to the paper and then open up. Now you have a three-dimensional pop-out project that is also the painting that Bagok did of the chair on his bedroom. Awesome job! Don't forget to take a picture of your project and put it up in Schoology for a grade. Van Gogh is a personal favorite artist of mine, so I had a lot of fun making this project. I hope you did have fun too. One more time, I thank you for allowing me in your time and your space, and I will see you next week with a new project.